The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. Mary stayed outside near the tomb weeping. Then still weeping, she stooped to look inside and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied and I don't know where they have put him. As she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not recognize him. Jesus said, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and remove him. Jesus said, Mary. She knew him then and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means master. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me because I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and find the brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. So Mary of Magdala went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel that we have on this feast of St. Mary of Magdalene is taken from St. John's Gospel, chapter 20. But before I reflect with you the Gospel of St. John chapter 20, the resurrection story of the risen Jesus, I want, you, I want to read you something about Celsus, a Greek philosopher who said that he didn't believe the resurrection story that he didn't believe in Christianity the Greek philosopher Celsus Celsus a Greek philosopher who lived in the second century AD was highly antagonistic to Christianity he wrote a number of works listing arguments against it. One of the arguments he believed most went like this. Christianity can't be true because the written accounts of the resurrection are based on the testimony of women. 
and he continued by saying, we all know women are historical. These are the words of the Greek philosopher Celsus. And we all know that in ancient societies, women was marginalized. And the testimony of women was never given much credence. Perhaps the strongest reason of taking the stories of the empty tomb absolutely seriously lies in the fact that it is women who played the leading role. And this is what we need to remember. The leading role in the resurrection stories whether you take it from St. John's Gospel or Mark's Gospel, we see the leading role are the women. It would have been very unlikely for anyone in the ancient world who was concocting a story to assign the principal part to women, since in those times they were not considered capable of being reliable witnesses. If someone in the ancient world wanted to make up a story in order to pass it off as true, they would not have placed women in the leading role as eyewitnesses. To do so would have immediately discounted the story. Why would the gospel writers tell us about these eyewitnesses? They either wanted no one to take them seriously or it was their desire to write what actually happened. The historical text for our message today focuses on one of these women, Mary Magdalene, whose feast we celebrate today. My dear friends, the first thing we see through this chapter is that we, that we live in the dark. Mary had a darkened beginning. If you have listened carefully in today's gospel, in verse 1, the word dark is mentioned. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. The dark here is not just referring to the time or early dawn. The dark here also refers that she had a darkened understanding, a very blink understanding. While it was still dark, not only recognizes the time of morning, but also the condition of heart and mind. And then if you read through the gospel in verse 2, it says, we don't know where they laid him, still in the dark. And then in verse 9 of today's gospel, they still did not understand, still in the dark. And in verse 13, I don't know where they have taken him. And in verse 14, she did not realize. All this points to one word, dark, the darkened mind. Everybody is in the dark. Not only literally, but psychologically, spiritually, mentally, it could be. No one knows what's going on.
Because in the story of the resurrection, the people there are all confused. They don't understand. They are in the dark. They are racing in the dark. Uh, if you have listened carefully in today's uh, gospel, uh, that Mary Magdalene ran. My dear friends, it is very important to look back at our own lives too. Especially when we are still in the dark. When things that we don't understand, when things happening around us that we don't understand, that we are in the dark, that we are trying to find out but could not. And that was the whole experience of Mary Magdalene. A darkened mind. A darkened understanding unable to perceive what's happening but no matter what Mary stood in the dark there is a purpose why she was there in the dark but remember that before this incident or this event Mary Magdalene, we all know that she was truly a wounded woman, a broken woman, a woman that Jesus forgave, a woman that Jesus healed, a broken woman. We don't uh, refer her as a woman who was living a loose life. Mary Magdalene does not come into that category. She's not the woman who was caught in adultery. She's not the woman. She was delivered by Jesus of the evil spirits that she had. She was delivered. Not connected to the woman who was caught in adultery because sometimes the mental image of Mary Magdalene is always the woman who was caught in adultery. No. Remember that Jesus liberated her. Jesus restored her to a true identity. And Mary Magdalene because of her experience with Jesus earlier, who brought new life to her, she could not able to accept the death of Jesus. That is why she kept running back to the tomb. And the tomb here is what? The tomb here is hopelessness, meaninglessness. The tomb here is where there is no life. There is no hope. But precisely at this particular tomb that she was there. She was not afraid. She's not going anywhere. She's not afraid to cry. She's not afraid to beg. She's not afraid to ask. And that is why, you know, there's a kind of a conversation that was going on inside the tomb. Uh, and here, something takes place. Remember that when Mary was communicating with the two angels, I remember what was asked by the angel, woman, why are you crying? Of course, she's crying because 
she loved Jesus so much. Only when you love someone, you will cry bitterly. Now, this is not drops of tears. Don't get it mistaken. It is not drop of tears. She was truly lamenting, wailing, wailing. That's the actual word, actually. She is wailing. She's so desperate that someone has taken the body of Jesus. She's so focused. And she asked, where is he? Do you know where they have taken him? Because of her own pain and aware of her own loss, she has not, she's not realizing that something is coming for her. And sometimes all this happens to us too. When we are in doubt, when we experience pain, when we experience loss, when we experience meaninglessness, something is coming somewhere. And then we realize that Mary Magdalene, she was not alone in the tomb, in the dark. She was not alone. Why? Jesus was just next to her. The whole encounter of Mary Magdalene with the risen Jesus. And she thought that she was seeing a gardener, as what St. John tells us. But rather, it was Jesus who comes to meet her, simply because she loved Jesus so much. Not just during his life on earth, but even when he's dead and gone. That same love, the same strong love that she had. And that is why she came running back to the tomb. And there, the Lord manifests himself by calling her, her name, Mary. Mary. And all this happening in the tomb, actually, in the dark. So what I'm saying here is that God can be found in darkness. God can be found when we go through our own brokenness. God can be found when we are lamenting. God can be found when we face our own tombs of meaninglessness, restlessness, hopelessness, that God can be found. And God would call us by our name, by our name, in the midst of all that is happening, in the face of the tombs of meaninglessness or hopelessness, God would call us by our name only if we remain faithful going through our own darkness not finding ways to escape from our darkness but remaining in that moment in our total or lack of understanding in our own darkness that we are able to encounter the reason Jesus. Yes, my dear friends, the gospel this afternoon is such a powerful gospel. You notice that the two other disciples will come, Peter and the beloved disciple. They will come, but they will look and they will return. 
But not Mary. Mary of Magdala will stand there. And after experiencing that, only then she goes and tells the good news of what she has experienced. Uh, because the gospel that we have is not a complete gospel. If you read the whole of chapter 20, you will see two other disciples will come and they will look and peep and then they will leave. They didn't stay in the tomb for a very long time. But Mary stood there. Faithfully, she was there. If Peter or the beloved disciple would have spent a little more time, they too would have experienced the risen Jesus. But they missed the moment, they missed the opportunity. But later, of course, Jesus would appear to them. Yes, my dear friends, isn't it a powerful story that we have this afternoon that all that we go through in life, even our darkest moment, that one can still experience the risen Lord. And the Lord will tell, call us Mary. And when the Lord calls us by our name, the darkness will give way. And then once we have experienced that, we proclaim that encounter to others. That is what we see. Oh. That remember, immediately after the encounter, what would Jesus say to Mary? Go and find the brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my father and your father. Go and find my, go and find the brothers and tell them. The first evangelizer of the risen Jesus is Mary Magdalene. Because she remained faithful in the darkest moments of her life. And because of that, and because she loved Jesus so much that the Lord gave her the commission to go and tell to the brothers, to the disciples, Isn't it a powerful story that we have? That strong witness of Mary Magdalene, her encounter with the risen Jesus in the tomb, so today, let us pray that we too may experience the risen Jesus wherever we are, whichever stages of life that we are in, even when we are in total darkness, that we may, that we can encounter the risen Jesus. And the risen Jesus will calls us by our name and invites us to share to others after encountering him. So let us pray and let us ask our Lord to be with us, to guide us, that we become credible witnesses like Mary Magdalene. And we ask this powerful saint to pray for us this afternoon.